the bone, you do a lot of bone scans, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and normally we do them because we're looking for metastasis. Okay. Once in a while you might get an osteomyelitis, but most of the time it's going to be for, for bone for cancer, either primary or metastatic. Most of the time it's metastatic. Yeah, prosthesis loosening, yeah, that's another thing, too. Um, well, one of the reasons why people like bone scan is because of this little thing down here. Um, if you work an x-ray, for us to see a change radiographically, 50% of the bone has to be eaten away. Uh, nuclear medicine, about 1%. Um, when I was in radiography back in the 70s, I worked at St. Bernardine's Hospital, and we used to have what they call a metastatic bone survey. I used to take an AP and lateral of the skull, AP and lateral cervical spine, AP lateral thoracic, shoulders. Okay, the problem is if we found they any... They hate bone surveys. They yeah. take so long. Forever. Exactly. Well, the problem is if I found anything, you know, the, the cancer was already gone. I mean, you know, the, the patient, you know, was six months, you know, too late. So the thing is, with, with, we came up with the bone scanning stuff, um, that was great because now we can see it a lot sooner and we can start, you know, different types of therapies more quickly. Um, as you know, cancer has three methods of treatment, right? Chemo, we have surgery, yeah, chemo, <coughs> radiation. radiation. Um, so the thing is, a lot of times these people come in and they'll do the surgery, um, but then they realize that it's already metastasized. So Basically, what we did was we saved these people a lot of unnecessary surgeries and things like that. Okay. So this is, these are our indications. Remember that any time you do something outside of the recognized indications, you're probably not going to get paid for it. Okay. Okay. Insurance companies will recognize it. Medicare, Medi-Cal will recognize it. But, so like I said, the most common reason is malignant disease. Um, you rarely see primary bone neoplasms. Have you guys seen very many osteosarcomas or fibrosarcomas or things like that? No. We don't. More, normally, we're dealing with other cancers that inherently spread to the bone. Um, I've seen an increase in osteomyelitis scans, especially with diabetic patients. And they get ulcers on their feet. Uh, we need to know if they have cellulitis or osteomyelitis. Because if they have osteomyelitis, then they're going to amputate, in most cases. Okay. <clears throat> and you know that they don't smell very well either. Yes. You know? Ew, disgusting. Okay. Uh, the other thing, the evaluation of skeletal pain. Uh, I know that I've taken x-rays on people that have negative x-rays. We do a bone scan, and we find small stress fractures. Um, I had one young lady who was coughing, did a rib series on her, nothing abnormal. Did a bone scan, she had two broken ribs from coughing. Wow. Okay? What? It's just mm -hmm. incident fine, right? Yeah. Um, then this thing of, of bone viability when the blood supply uh, is in question. Um, how many of you have done like uh, leg calf perthes evaluations, femoral neck, or avascular necrosis studies? Have you done those? Normally, if you have like. Um, Leg calf parenthes is when a, somebody has like a broken hip and the blood supply is cut off to the femoral head and they lose it. Okay? Or if you're taking um, steroids or things like that, um, you can lose blood flow to the um, femoral neck and uh, head. And then also to the uh, tibial tuberosity. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I sent you the PowerPoint. You don't need to copy it. I already sent it to you. Oh. She's just no, but I record what you explain oh. and stuff, so I don't have okay. technology. <laughs> High tech technology. Well, anyway, if you, you know, sometimes you do a three-phase bone scan. It doesn't necessarily have to be for osteomyelitis. It could be for the determination of, of bone, blood supply, and then you know the detection of occult fractures. Uh, as I said, even with our best radiography stuff, we still don't always get um, all the fractures. The only problem with bone scans is that it's too sensitive because any change in the bone, any inflammation like arthritis, 
um, will cause the, the, the scan to be abnormal. So then when that happens, we normally have to request x-rays to see if there's something there. Mm -hmm. Right? You guys done that? See, at my hospital, they used to make us do it. Or they made me do it. Because by the time I get through with all my bone scans, everyone else had gone home. So I would <laughs> shoot the x-rays on my patients. I'd look at the bone scan and say, okay, yeah, okay, that's hot, so we'll take a picture of it. Okay, now, this is kind of an important part of the bone scanning thing here. 65% um, of your bone is made up of this, what we call a calcium hydroxyapatite crystal. And uh, notice CA10, PO4, OH2. All of our bone scanning agents that we're currently using replace one of these chemicals in the scan. Um, all of the stuff that we do for bone palliation, um, the 89 strontium, the 153 samarium, it replaces the calcium. Those are calcium analogs. The PO4 is what our MDP and HDP replace. And then the OH, this is what fluorine, sodium fluoride replaces on the new PET bone scans. Uh, and PET bone scans really aren't that old, that new. Um, when we were at County USC back in 1975, we were doing research with fluorine 18 and bone scan. We used to do them on patients there. Okay, so um, again, keep that in mind. I wanted to kind of show you the evolution of why, in the very near future, you're going to be doing PET bone scans. You see a big difference there, guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very clear. Um, MDP is very sensitive, but we miss a lot. So you look at the uh, sodium fluoride scan over here, 10 millicuries, uh, two hours post-injection, and you know, just a whole different situation. You can see all these other lesions that are not showing up here. Okay. Um, so just FYI. Both of those replace the phosphate group, the PO4. Well, this is MDP over here. This is what we're using now. But both of those replace the PO4? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. This one, this one replaces the PO4. This one replaces the OH. Um, Let me go back here. See? Uh, technesium replaces the PO4-6 group. Sodium fluoride replaces the OH group. And the strontium and samarium replace the calcium. When they were using P32, P32 was replacing the phosphorus. But I'm just putting down the stuff that we're currently using. But I, this thing here just really blew me away when I saw this because it is. I mean, that's right now. Does anybody know what the standard is for evaluating bone metastasis? What do you think the standard is? The gold standard? Anything that's not asymmetrical is suspicious? Well, no, no, no. What I'm asking is out of all of the modalities that are currently available, oh. which one is the best? For evaluating pet. No. no, pet is for the future. CT. Uh, not CT. MRI. MRI. <laughs> MRI is what they call the gold standard right now. But an MRI scan would take hours and hours. You'd have maybe right. one patient a day. <clears throat> so what they're discovering is that the fluorine 18 is as good as an MRI. Okay? And you notice. Look at the clearance. Mm -hmm. I mean, the images are much sharper. Um, good clearance out of the uh, bloodstream. So it's a great, great background. Yeah, a lot less background. Sure. So everything is much sharper. But I mean, like, here we have a lesion that's not showing up here. Um, we have them on the ischium, um, sacrum, yeah. spine. Look at all the ones on the spine. You got one, two, three, four, four and maybe one here. Okay. So I think it's I think it's a good thing. That's why I said you're gonna be doing a lot of PET C T in the future. And it's not that expensive. Look at those. Ten millicuries. Okay. Um, so the thing that we're talking about here, okay, um, the radio pharmaceuticals that we're using, the MDP and the HDP. We're really going to concentrate on that for a little bit um, because um, that's our current stuff that everyone's uh, working with right now. So um, I'm trying.
trying to think what else. Okay, what I've done here is um, when you make up the kits. Now we don't use um, pyrophosphate for bone imaging. Um, actually, what we use pyrophosphate for right now is labeling red blood cells. If you're not using the uh, the uh, what's the what's the kit for labeling red blood cells? Ultra tag. Ultra tag. Ultra tag. Ultra tag. Yeah, um, ultra tag is nothing more than tin chloride. Okay, and that goes into the hemoglobin of the red blood cell and allows you to label it. The reason pyrophosphate can be used is because it has a high concentration of tin chloride. Okay, but some of the differences though. Um, you notice that POP versus PCP. The key to understanding bone scanning and why some kits are better than others is because when we inject it, we want to be able to scan as quickly as possible. And the diphosphonate groups are smaller chains, which, you know, in other words, you get these groups, these big long chains of PC, 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 or POP, POP, POP. And the thing is, before it can be incorporated into the bone, it has to be broken down. So the shorter the chain is when we inject it, the faster it gets incorporated into the bone. The sooner the patient gets scanned, the faster you get to go home. So we're using now these PCP groups. Um, there should actually, I don't know why I didn't show it. There's actually a, a covalent bond here between the phosphorus and the oxygen. And when I did this... Same thing over there? Is yeah, that a water same. group or is it... Is that well, water what, or is it a well, Yeah, this, this, this group over here, okay, yeah, basically it's, well, this is a hydroxyl group, okay? And actually the only difference between MDP and HDP is that there's three OH groups for the MDP. But otherwise, we have oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen up here. These are covalent bonds Two between nine. the phosphorus and the oxygen. Um, I don't know why when I had this, when I did this PowerPoint, it was working, but it's not working now. So, um, but one of the things that they liked was that, you know, the more oxygen that's available, um, they felt the more likely it was to oxidize the tin in your kit and then give you free tagging. Okay. Normally what they'll do is, if you're looking for the chemical symbols, they'll put like R1 up here for a radical, and then R2 down here for a radical. But yeah, basically that's, that's all it is. Okay, now, this is what you need to keep in mind. The localization method is chemabsorption. It's not diffusion. There's, there's actually a crossing of the uh, MDP or HDP through the water membrane that surrounds that calcium hydroxide capsule. So it's like, a they call it a water shell, but that allows the minerals to move back and forth. Um, it's not like diffusion, so it's not exactly that. Then the other thing that's important for you to remember is the blood flow. Um, if the bone is getting, if it's hyperemic, then it'll get more blood. Um, if there's avascular necrosis or ischemia, uh, then obviously that's going to be shown up when we inject and do a flow study. Okay. Where we normally like on the delayed images, okay, everyone tends to look at the osteoblasts. <clears throat> Because those are the hot spots on the bone. But sometimes we forget about the osteoclasts. Uh, cancer doesn't actually pick up pyrophosphate or, or uh, diphosphonates. What you have to do or what you have to look at is the repair that's going around where the cancer is destroying the bone. So a lot of times if you look very closely, you'll see the cancer has destroyed the bone. You actually have what they call a lytic or cold lesion. But surrounding that is the hot spot where we're seeing the MDP accumulate. And remember that the cells that we have, if your anatomy and physiology, uh, bone typically starts out as cartilage, hyaline cartilage. And does everyone remember how bone kind of works? Um, the cartilage starts laying down calcium phosphate and it builds this calcium phosphate shell around itself and winds up committing suicide. So what happens then is that the osteoclasts come in, they drill a little hole, and they let the osteoblasts move in and take over, kind of like a little hermit crab. 
Once the osteoblast moves in, it starts producing uh, what we call osteoid or collagen. And that's what helps the bone develop some flexibility. Otherwise, if you just had the minerals, the bones would break all the time. Right? So you need to have the combination 35% proteins or osteoid, 65% minerals, which is your calcium and your phosphorus. Okay? So whenever you see osteoblastic activity, those are the hot spots. Osteolytic or osteoclastic activity, those are the cold spots. Okay. So uh, here's some normal ones here. This is a kid. Um, we know anywhere where there's uh, epiphyseal growth plates. So we have some here in the sutures of the skull, uh, the mandible, shoulders, uh, SC, uh, SC joints. Yeah, SC joints. My eyes are going bad on So all of these epiphyseal plates. And over here you see that there's a lytic lesion. Okay, those are usually more difficult to see, especially with MDP scans. Do you notice that? So you've got to be really, really careful. And this one was more obvious. Is that a broken bone? No. Well, what's happening is the cancer is eating away this part of the rib, and then it's, it's also over here, too. And then here you have another lytic lesion. You see you have the increase in activity around the lesion, and this is what it looked like on the x-ray. But a cold spot, lytic lesions. Okay. Now, the other thing about technesium, and uh, I'm going to get another picture that shows what happens when there's too much tin chloride in the kit. But uh, can anyone tell me what happened here? Picture too early. Okay, you got one picture too early. Ashley, what's your opinion? <clears throat> I don't think it, um, yeah, well, not picture too early, but um, I don't think it's tagged properly. Okay, so do you think, is it hydrolyzed reduced technesium, or is it free technesium? Let's go with free technesium. Okay, how many say free technesium? <laughs> got two, two and a three, three hands down here, uh, and just thinking about it. Go free. Okay, you got four, okay, that's free technesium. Okay, how do we know? Where does free technesium Summit, go? Stomach, salivary glands. Salivary? What's that? Thyroid, Thyroid. stomach. Okay. Thyroid. So those are your keys of this free technesium. Um, if it was hydrolyzed reduced technesium, that normally combines with tin chloride, and you'll see activity in the liver. I'm going to put a picture of that. I've got a picture uh, that I'll show you. So there, there's two different methods for two different locations where this stuff localizes, depending whether it's free or hydrolyzed reduced. Um, what test, well, we said chromatography. Remember that for free technesium, I use my solvent as water. It's basically normal saline. Okay? For hydrolyzed reduced technesium, I'm going to normally be using like an acetone or some other type of um, mineral solvent or Okay, so we talked about the mechanisms of localization, um, and uh, do we need this here? Okay. The other thing I wanted you to be aware of that creates problems for us, okay, we know that it goes to the calcium hydroxyapatite crystal, but 50 to 60 percent of your dose gets excreted through the urine. So you want to make sure that you know when you do your patients. Um, you change their gown, you protect your table, you protect your gamma camera from any urine that might get, you know, on it. Um, and, okay, so... I think that when the patient goes to the restroom and they didn't really necessarily wipe very well, and then you can see it. Oh, wow. Some other pads. I think the worst one I saw was when a patient, they urinated down their leg and they pulled their <laughs> shoes up with it. Oh! So their, their feet were just, yeah, their feet were just super, super hot. Hey, Margaret. I, oh my goodness. I'm not to bed today, guys. So give me five minutes and I shall leave my I am Okay. Okay, so anyway, um, Margaret needs to hand out some stuff here for a second.